Thank you, Rebecca, for sharing your, your very personal story. Um, next up, we have Chief Sil Cagliano. He is a battalion chief for the Youngstown Fire Department. He's also the deputy chief for the Mahoney County Hazardous Materials uh, Response Agency, as well as a member of the Ohio Hazmat Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, chief Cagliano, would you please come up to the podium? I'd like to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to speak. Uh, I believe that what we have to say here is very important to the people of the state of Ohio and other states where we have fracking and fracking loopholes like this to protect the drivers from helping us to protect other people. Let me give you a scenario. You and your team are calling out for an emergency. You have just basic information of what's going on. When you get there, it looks like a bomb went off. You see coal black smoke just rolling up the hill. There appears to be lines of fire spread across several acres of the well pad as you approach. You notice coming up to the site that there are explosives on this thing. As the fire burns nearby, you wonder what's going to happen. You try to find out what chemicals are on site. You learn from the first responders the list is burned up, the trailer on site. The list is trying to be recovered from a nearby town. And once you receive this list, which has been delayed. It lacks all the chemical information you need to effectively mitigate and assess the situation. Can you imagine how difficult this makes our job? This is exactly the situation the first responders found on June 28th when they responded to the Statoil chemical well fire on the well pad in Clarington, Ohio. Under current state law, the identity of chemicals can be protected as a trade secret and not disclose to first responders and state agencies responding to these emergencies. We are asking our first responders, you're asking me, to respond to an emergency without key pieces of information to accurately assess the situation and make the best decision possible to help the public as long as this chemical loophole remains in effect. This loophole prevents first responders from getting full list access of chemicals from that industry or the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, including those trade secret protected chemicals that have affected her. This information is critical for first responders to get in order to mitigate damage and reduce the impact to neighbors and the public as they respond to fires, spills, and other emergencies. Today, we're asking lawmakers to do all they can to advance an amendment to the state bill that will close the chemical reporting loopholes and make sure the first responders and others, like myself, protect health and protect public health, have access to all the chemical information. Thank you for allowing me to speak today.